<laughs> so, helpful ES6 syntax, uh, the way I want to describe this as, is, uh, you ever been like a, on a safari or like a zoo exhibit where you're walking around, I'm just like pointing things out to you? That's basically what this lecture is going to be about. All right, I'm just going to point out, ooh, this is new syntax, this is how it works, this is what it does, and this is why it may or may not be important. That's really about it. So, first thing uh, is you're going to use a lot of this in Mod 4, so please, if you use no other real readmes besides the Ajax, the Fetch, the Async one, this one will actually probably prove fairly useful. So, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, destructuring. You will see a lot, a lot, a lot of stack overflow that utilizes destructuring. This is the more modern JavaScript, and the reason I want to introduce it to you is not because I expect you to use it, but it's because I expect you to read and understand it, because you will come across a lot of articles that can probably explain it better than me, and two, will try to attempt to answer your questions as you get into React, because they will be written in modern JavaScript, and so when you see this kind of syntax, it should make sense to you. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, what is known as the key value shortcut, and then the what destructuring does. To put it in a nutshell, technically speaking, in the technical language, what destructuring allows you to do is it is syntactical sugar that allows you to create new variables with matching key values on the fly. And I'll show you why it's particularly useful. So here we have, oh man, I just realized I'm going to use the Chrome console, which, you know, last time we were there, <laughs> um, it was rough. So I have something called const spaceship. As a key of pilot pointing to my boy Elon Musk. And uh, I have guidance pointing to the Zuck and Chef to like the lamp sauce. So what I can do is I can do const and use this syntax. It is known as object destructuring. I'm literally putting inside a brand new object literal the name of pilot and Chef and I'm pointing to where it's going to pull the key values from. So spaceship here is an object as I literally just defined. So by doing this as opposed to const pilot, const chef, what I'm saying is inside spaceship there must be a key of pilot. So I'm going to simultaneously create a new const called pilot that has a value of Elon Musk. So let's just take a look at this and hopefully Chrome doesn't... Chrome is my friend. I would never speak ill of Chrome. Ever. God bless you. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna miss you all. So, is this is this the right size? Perf. Cool. So, when I console log pilot, I have the value of Elon Musk. So this right here allows me to create on the fly the name of the variable pulling from the key in spaceship to the value in spaceship. So if I were to say, what is Chef? Gordon Ramsay. It already exists. Cool? And so there's some pitfalls and traps because it will fail silently. And here's what I mean. Bloop, bloop. If I were to add in something, right, comma, just for your class, quick throwback. All right. Does Spaceship have a key of PA Rivers? What is PA Rivers? Now you're getting JavaScript. Defined. But the declaration of PA Rivers exists. That is correct. Cool? So let's dive into this a little bit. All right, all right, before I move forward, any questions on destructuring, what the syntax looks like, and what it is doing? Are you going to talk more about it? Yes, I just literally want you to answer those three questions in your mind, and if you cannot answer those questions, ask those questions. Do you know what it looks like, and do you know what it's doing? Question. So what if you have like an object that takes or uh, probably takes down the switch of two, and mm -hmm. then I have to key that pi can jump with different values. If I do const pi to chef k rivers in the switch of two, does that whole bind in my initial constant? Before I answer that question, to repeat the question is, let's say I had another object called Spaceship 2 with different key values, and I tried using this again. 
right? Does it overwrite the values? Well, let's take a look. Error. Cool. But if it was var, you know it. It's dirty. Yeah. Now you're getting JavaScript. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Powerful. I'm gonna miss you guys. It's nice because like I can like move fast in JavaScript now, but when I was week one, I was like, so null is false. Okay. Okay. It's, it's pretty it's pretty cool. No, I'm saying how proud I am how far and fast you learned. You learnerized. Here's why it's important as it relates to OOJS um, and how we can kind of utilize the syntax, and I'll show you the difference. So this is what you know and love, right? This.name is props.name, and then this.favcolor is props.favcolor. So what you will start to see in some of your Stack Overflow is this. Inside the constructor, it is not necessarily a variable, but already it is going to receive object destructuring so that it becomes this.name is equal to name. Before I actually explain it, who already feels comfortable about what's happening? So powerful. Cool. Let me actually explain it so that you feel more comfortable. And the idea is that props is just a placeholder. This is the argument. So if I put in props with this object name and fave color, props.name is actually going to be props.name, which is Winfield. So this.name for new person will in fact be Winfield. That's what it will equate to in the older syntax. Now, if I pass in a props to constructor where there's object destructuring, this is pulling the name, creating a new variable called name, pulling from the props object with the same key of name, pointing to the value of Winfield, meaning I created a new variable called name pointing to the value of Winfield. So this.name is equal to Winfield. It is the exact same thing. Without that explanation, seeing this for the first time, it's a little tricky. It doesn't look like a Ruby, so it doesn't help very much. So is that within the scope of, of the constructor? So like Correct. Not reassigning name? It's within... Every time the constructor? Yes. Okay. Yep. So like the difference is the dot at the it saves literally this right here. Yeah. And that's why it works. Cool. This is just one tiny extrapolation of what it will do, but it will do so much more as you get into React, where you will have to create objects with the same name that point to values inside other objects that have the matching key. The reason this is important is because of immutability. Quick intro to React, and I'm going to drop all of the React labs for you probably tomorrow, so you can kind of like take a look at them already, get a head start before the weekend, is that React renders based on a change. What that means is if I have the DOM, right? React does something called virtual DOM. It's not really important right now. But if something happens and I change what the value of the inner text for an H2 is, React does some quick math that says, hey, is the old H2 the same as the new H2? If it is different, it will update the DOM with the new H2 value. If they're the same, do nothing, which makes a lot of sense. That's why it is efficient, and it only re-renders what it needs to re-render. It doesn't re-render like the whole tree, like normal updates for the DOM are. So that being said, it's important to maintain immutability. What that means is things do not change. You are creating a new copy that is a deep copy, not a shallow copy. A shallow copy just means that I'm assigning it to the same value, but as we know, objects are passed by reference. If I create a shallow copy and literally do an assignment operator, they point to the same place in memory. So if I triple equals, a and B, it will be true. Therefore, React will not recognize that they are different, and it will not trigger a re-render. What I need to do is create a brand new copy of A, mutate 
that copy, B, and have it point to a different place in memory. I need to make a deep copy. That way when React does it's A triple equal to B, then it will recognize false and it will trigger the re-render. Cool? So. React is more active than It's quite reactive, yes. You can say that it reacts. Plus, plus the O. Reacts. Keep going. <laughs> All right. So we, we have, and I showed you this key value shortcut already. I have a pizza and a restaurant, right? TM. And that is, I have an object, right? If I want a key of pizza pointing to the value of the pizza variable, pizza and pizza, they look at the same. So, I don't know what that accent's supposed to be, but the idea is that I can just simply change it to pizza. I don't have to say key of pizza is equal to variable pizza. I can just say pizza. It will infer then there must be a key and a value named the same thing, and it will in fact create. So this is the key value assignment shortcut. Does anyone want another example, or are we cool? All right. So it's only in case you want a value, it should be the same as the key. Only in that case. Yes, only if the key and the value is a variable that's exactly the same as the key. Elizabeth. So the constant pizza from the first line is what the value of the pizza and the pizza object is? Correct. So if I put pizza. Pizza object two dot pizza, what would I get? Yes. Okay. So this key value assignment shortcut is just saying this is going to have a key and value exactly the same. So it's just kind of working together. Syntactical sugar. Yep. It's just weird because when you see an object and you don't see two key values, it could throw you off, which is why I wanted to take the time to explain some of these things Safari style. So we have the E6 spread operator. This one gets a little bit tricky, a little bit dicey. I can have something called uh, MUD. Don't ask me why some of these names are like this. Uh, every class I could just update them. I'll probably put chair kids in the next one. And then the next mod three will come in of like chair kids. I'm like, don't worry about it. Uh, with a key of blood, pokey pointing to, uh, it's, it is spooky season right now. All right? What I can do is two ways to create a deep copy. We talked a little bit about that mutability and why I need that deep copy and how it's going to be pertinent to React is using um, not key value shorthand because I don't have a key inside mud is I can use what is known as the spread operator. The easiest way to think about this is mud copy is going to spread all of its key values inside this brand new object literal and also simultaneously add new key values. So let's take a look at what that means, because that sounded crazy. It did sound very powerful. So let's do this. Ready? Const chair kids. All right, like that already? Powerful. And I can have PA and a key of rivers. <laughs> I love that for some reason. Cool? Uh, cool. What I can do is make a const, all right? Uh, what do we have like? throne kids is equal to, and I can create a copy. I'm going to spread over all the key values of chair kids into throne kids. So notice how this is literally an object literal. I'm just breaking a brand new object and I'm putting all the key values from chair kids into it. So what is throne kids? Interesting. And what is chair kids? Interesting. Let's try it. Because of that deep copy, the power. Yeah? I can, in this example here, oh, okay. In this example, oh, okay, I'll just do it myself. I can do a const, right? Like new kids on the block is equal to an object. All right, very good. Of throne kids, 
and I can just sprinkle in new key values at will, right? Like, like, and do um, unoriginal. I'm not thinking very clearly right now. Cool. But also, what else I can do is throw them right here, right? Der. So let's take a look at new kids on the block. So the order matters, right? I've added this before, and then I spread in all the key values of thrown kids, and then I added something after. And that's the order that it will come in. So if you wanted something to be in the beginning, you can add it, and that's the power of the spread. Cool. The spread operator also works with arrays. So if I wanted to make a copy of an array, I would literally put dot, 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 and then the array. Make a brand new array literal, dot, 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 old array, and the new values that I wanted, right? So const a is for array, One, two, three. boom. And then const new, new array. And that's just gonna be, I'll make a literal, and I'm gonna spread right in there. A is for array, very good. <coughs> And they should not double equal each other. Can you explain why they don't recur again with deep copy? Well, deep copy is literally that by definition. And that is going to take a copy of all of the contents of the original and create a brand new object pointing to a different place in memory so that they are recognized as different objects. So it's like they both have different IDs, like how a movie is. Correct. They will have different okay. locations in memory. Yeah. That being said, the old way, before the spread operator, there was something called object dot This is not very good. Object dot, dot assign. So do you remember in Ruby when you did like object, or you did like number dot class? You could do number dot, have you guys seen Ancestors? Let's take a look. Throw, throw, throw back a little Ruby action. I can do like one dot class. It's a fixed num, noise, noise. I can check his ancestors. Dang, I spelled it wrong. What is it? That's right. Maybe not. Maybe we thought that was singular. No. Type in methods. Includes in there. You sure? No. <laughs> Embarrassing. Embarrassing. It's it is it is dot ancestors, interesting. Oh, maybe fixed num is oh dot class dot in ancestors. Let's find out. Two dot class dot ancestors. Powerful, powerful. See that? Don't memorize anything. You just look it up. So, the point is, fixed num inherits from integer, which inherits from numeric, which inherits from comparable, which inherits from object, from the kernel, from basic object. JavaScript has something very similar, and that is the basic object. Basic object, what every single prototype of everything will eventually point to. So let's test this crazy theory, and that is um, console dir string like this. Ha, not the keyword. Got him, coach. Oh, dang, embarrassing. Let's just do an object of key and original value. Oop, very good. It's an object. Everything will come back from this. The proto points to the prototype of the object. So that's like the, the JavaScript equivalent of the prototype eventually inheriting from it. So one of the things here is there's a method called assign. This is the original way to create a deep copy of something. And that is, I use object.assign, and I can just literally give it the target. The target right now will be an empty object, and what do I want to put inside this empty object? All the key values from mud copy. And that's how I would create a copy of mud copy. And they should not equal each other. So the spread operator is just syntactical sugar baked on top of something called object.assign. So you will start to see a lot of stack overflows use the spread operator. And then if you look at older 
Stack Overflows, like 2013, 2014, you'll see object.assign. And they are the same. Yeah? OK, so I, I didn't write this one, actually. Um, Andrew wrote this one. And he put murder face next to me. Very, <laughs> very good. Cool. So you have to get good. You have to get, stop the madness. You have to get good at your enumerables. Do you remember how important it was in Ruby? So in JavaScript, you haven't worked with that many besides for each and map. But in the same way, you will really need to get good, especially in project mode right now. And when you get to React and you build more complicated apps, you have to get good at the find, the filter, the reduce, and all the other array iterators. And so part of that, hmm? no. That's just vanilla JavaScript. Um, and so here, cool. You have to get good at slice, and you have to understand how that works. Who feels comfortable with slice? Oh, OK. All right, great. Good for me. And you. Uh, who feels comfortable with filter? OK, cool. What I'm going to do is usually that happens. And I literally build my own filter here. And I will talk through how the code works. And this is a great segue into day two when I built my own for each method. And you guys are like, I'm really hungry. Let's go to lunch. Uh, but now you're better at JavaScript, so hopefully it will make sense. So think about filter, right? It takes a callback where it is looking for a condition. If that condition is true, what will it do? Yes, it will add it to an array. And so all the items where the condition is true, it will add it to the array. That being in mind, let's build my own filter with the prototype, the right way to do it. And that is, it is a function, and it takes a callback, just like map and for each do. Right? Look, filter, that takes a callback. This happens to be an anonymous arrow function. And the first thing it does is it creates a brand new array, because filter returns a new array. I'm going to loop through everything. That's what iterators do. And then this is what I'm going to do. This is where, if you understand this, you should feel good and proud because your JavaScript's good. If you don't, please brush up on your vanilla JavaScript, right? And you can talk to me afterwards. We can go through practice exercises like this. I'm not trying to like leave you in the dust. But I make a brand new array element variable pointing to the current element, which we know in the for loop, i is 0. It's the first element index. So for something like an array like Evans and Murderface, is that your class, Murderface? No. I think it was 0827. Either way, long time ago. So, old. Uh, it's the first element, right? So what's the first element of this array? Your boy, right? Very good. Now, if, because remember, the filter needs to be true for it to be added to the array. The callback, right? Remember, the filter needs to be true to be added to the array. If is just working on a Boolean. So if I invoke the callback, so here I have, does the name not equal to Evans? That is what the callback is. So the callback is simply saying, does the name not equal to Evans? What's the first thing that goes inside here? Evans. So is Evans not equal to Evans? False. Do nothing. Right? Boom. You hit the next thing in the for loop. And that is what? Murder face. Cool. So let's call that callback in here. And is murder face not equal to Evans? It requires a condition. So this evaluates to what? True. Therefore, if true, then push in murder face. Return murder face. And that's how filter is working. You have to pass in filter, you have to pass in a condition. You get good at these by building your own and understanding them. I will help you build any of the iterators that you want. Um, the trickier ones become like reduce, um, but get good at them, cool? Are there any questions on this creation of the prototype of the custom filter? Did this help you at all? Yes, no? Cool. All right, remember, you can always monkey patch stuff. So if I were to put array.monkeypatch, 
How about just get this? Embarrassing. All right. Cool. We're going to talk about the hour function super fast, and that is, remember, one liner, no curly boys, implicit return. If you have it on a multi-line, you need the curly brackets and you must say return. Any questions? There's also one more, and that is, do I need the bananas if there's one argument inside the arrow function? No. Oh, be good. Cool. All right. Last thing is we will talk about the arrow function, and then I will, I will let you work on your projects just to make sure you're good. And I'll tell you something to research and look into. Um, cool. Good old dog and Winfield. Remember Winfield and dog? Cool. In save fave foods here. Actually, let me blow this up so you don't see the answer. In case some of you already looked. Bunch of phonies over here. <laughs> cool. Save fave foods is a function, right? What is this dot? Oh, dang it. This is, dang my good comments. Oh. <laughs> Who agrees that this is dog in this context? It's a good question. It's a good question. Yeah. Nice try. Yes. All right. Remember, inside dog, this is dog. The this keyword is dog, right? So save fave foods. So dog dot save fave foods is a function. This the keyword this is dog. This dot fave snacks must be dog dot fave snacks, which is the array which I can in fact call a array iterator on, and it takes in a arrow function. The arrow function does what differently in regards to the this keyword than the function keyword? Does anyone want to take a guess at the technical explanation? Very good. Cool. Who feels comfortable with that? It binds this. What does that mean? Oh, sorry. I, that looked like a, I usually I'm expecting like a thumbs up. This is more like a question. Sorry, sorry. Cool. So what should dots, dog dot save fave foods return? Who thinks it's going to be undefined? Who thinks it's going to be Dog likes, Winfield likes cheese, peanut butter, and carrots. Sorry, I literally had to like compile and value in my head. Do you see that? The thinking? It's wild. Okay, who has like no clue? Okay, so like three people voted. All right, we'll try that one more time. Undefined? Actually defined. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. What about this one? Save foods, no arrow. Literally the only difference, it being the function keyword again. And what does the function keyword here mean as it relates to the this keyword? To the window? Play. To the wall? <laughs> there is a brand new context execution. It is a baseless function, and it will redefine what the this keyword points to. Remember, because I could just basically pull this out, bloop, put it on another line, and then name it, and then put that name right here. Because I can do that, if it's being invoked right here on the new line, it's not attached to anything. It has a brand new, this keyword, new context execution, pointing to what, if it's on the global. Window. Okay, let's not go that far, but yes, the window. <laughs> Be good. All right. So class properties, again, you can do this. Remember, bark. If I wanted to use bark in the context of another method inside here, meaning, um, cool, I have bark, and I had another me method for a dog called meow. No, no one thought that was weird? Oh, dang it, embarrassing. Very good. All right. Cool. Um, mega bark. Oh, bloop, bloop, bloop. Cool. If I wanted to reference the bark method, how would I use it? Can I just bark it like this? 
How would I do it? This dot bar. Correct. Why does it need the this keyword? Yes, you are remember inside the dog class. Once you are invoking mega bark, you have to go back into the this. This is going to be very important as you write a lot of components in React, basically like your HTML, referring to methods inside the classes. You have to be aware of what the this keyword is so all the time. I would, I would ask you to to play with it and see what happens. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. Get smart. Um, all right. This is very tricky. All right. As you're writing a lot of JavaScript, dynamic object keys. So it's important to recognize that there is going to be a difference. Like let's say const Vera getting gains. Cool. I can have an object, const, right, Jim, hmm. is equal to an object. Just empty object, no big deal. Is there a difference between Jim.Vera equals thing and then Jim bracket Vera equals to thing? Who says yes, there's a difference? Who says there is no difference, Evans, you're trying to trick me. Well, let's play. Cool. Let's take a look at Jim. The dot notation will always, the dot notation will always take this immediately as the key. The bracket will compile and reference the variable. Cool? Look a little sneaky, but there's a difference. A little sneaky. I'm just trying to level up your JavaScript. Now I'm just wasting your time. So. All right. Cool. Difference on the bracket notation and the dot notation as you're assigning values. Can be tricky. Are there any? Please just clarify. No problem. So the dot notation will literally always just name it as the key. If I use the bracket notation, it will look for a variable. And then literally getting gains here becomes the key. So this and this, they look similar, but they are mad different. Mad different, yo. Yes, Vera. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? I mean, what, what's the question? So if it didn't exist, like the cost era, whatever. Um, there you go. Yes. This will break your code. Negative. Because it will create the key, dolphin. Smort, smort. Yeah, well, because this is a string and no longer referencing what I would describe as a uncaught reference error, dolphin is not defined because it is a string. I'm making a string literal right now. See? Boop. Mad sick. Cool. All right. So remember, dynamic key assignment, it's different, the dot and the bracket notation. This is just more about the bind. This is the solution that I was going to ask you, like, hey, how do I fix the function keyword? Remember, you can just bind this. And the bind this is OK because it is outside the function here. If it's outside the function, it is still in reference to what this is here. And the last thing I want to show you, this is the absolute last thing for real, and then I'll let you go is going to be, you will see some hacky, hacky stuff. It is crazy. Um, it's very hacky. And uh, let's take a look. Do, 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 do. Like, that looks yeah. fine. 
Yeah, it is very hacky. Um, in the way that we used to do things in JavaScript. Cool? So I will show you. Cool. Remember I showed you this? And you were like, whoa. Cool. Let's do, let's do that. No, you don't remember that? It wasn't wild? Cool. Let's check it out. Look at this. Look at that. Gross. Var underscore this. Right. Correct. Yes. Because um, it's, it's binding this initially. But the idea is that it uses var this too. Because look at how it's actually actually connecting this dot name. What it's doing is, you see how I have the comment this dot dog, this is dog? This is how it saves the this keyword. This is what is happening under the hood. Inside the function, if it sees an arrow function on the inside, on the outer scope, it will hackily save the this keyword. So what you wind up seeing is nonsense like the code I'm about to write. var self equals to this. And then you do self.name. Because I'm saving what the this keyword is pointing to here. So then I can use it as what I think it is. Remember, this is dog here. So I can do dog.name. It is very hacky. And unfortunately, prior to ES6, and arrow functions and the dot bind, this was a thing. You know what's even crazier? You look at Stack Overflow and they don't use self. They use this. Oh yeah, you'll find that. They use that, that is correct. They use that. So if you see it, don't be scared, don't be afraid. <laughs> be upset a little bit, yes, and thank, bless, Bless up to uh, Lord Gaines and uh, ES6, the dot bind and the arrow function. So I just wanted to show you all this as you start to learn on your own and become more self-sufficient developers. Remember, the hand-holding gets less and less as we progress. You will be entering mod four, the last real mod that you're tested in, and it becomes a lot more of self-discovery, learning, and I just wanted to give you the heads up on a lot of the wacky things you'll see in JavaScript so that you can actually try to understand them. Remember, I sit 10 feet away, so I, I will be there to help you, but go to Alex first for your React questions. If he's unavailable, or if you're or Chris are unavailable, I can do my best. Yeah. So what if you, so oh, you're what right. React, and I write it, and I write it just like that. So you can probably do that. Is that like still? If you wind up doing this style of coding on line 11, I will, I will ask why. Um, and usually the answer is, um, and this is true for like older developers, usually the answer is, um, it's a bad habit, I, I know what that's doing and I, I understand it because first I make it work, then I make it sexy, right? Then I throw in the arrow function or I'll change this to like the function keyword, bloop, bloop, and I'll get rid of this arrow and then I'll drop a quick bind here. <laughs> so, that is correct. It is the equivalent of using a, an arrow function. Could you do self or could you do var that equals this and then find that? <laughs> yes. Var <laughs> uh, that equals to this and then find that. Powerful, and, I, and I'm only humoring this question because it shows a solid understanding of JavaScript, but if you were writing code like this, I would be like, interesting, interesting. Um, but I'm, I'm proud of all of you, and uh, just understanding this lecture, um, I don't know, it makes me really happy, so, cool. All right, are there any other questions? Cool, all right, thanks for your time today.